The pastor referred to Proverbs 13.22 a little while ago, which says that the wealth of the wicked is stored for the righteous. And it is through the kings anointed to take dominion that that transfer of wealth is going to occur. Before the king went to battle, the priest came and blessed the king and blessed the warriors. And the king needed the blessing of the priest in order to be successful in battle. Father, we believe that indeed no weapon formed against him will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against him in judgment will be condemned. For this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. And his righteousness is of you, Lord. Father, you've said that and we believe that today. Father, we ask today that you would give him the tongue of the learned to speak that word. Father, we ask that your blessing would come upon our nation. Father, those like our senator, Father, that they would receive these words. We're going to welcome uh, uh, just a, a man that's been such a gr- become such a great friend and a great blessing to us all. And uh, we were talking a few weeks ago. You know, we've been doing this series here that God laid in my heart, getting to the top and staying there. A message for us as individuals, the kingdom of God, but also for America. It's not enough to get there. We need to stay there. And it's not a coincidence that... In a few weeks, we go into what's called in the Bible, Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. In a few weeks, it'll be the very first day of the spiritual year. It'll be the spiritual year of the year 2012, not January, but in a few weeks, 2012. The number 12 means divine government. That God will begin to rule and reign. Not Wall Street, not Washington. God's people and his kingdom will begin to rule and reign. I know that's why God got Raphael's son elected. Ted Cruz, the next senator. But here's the exciting thing, and that's why I know it's timely for him to teach this and bring this anointing. The rabbinical teaching is, especially amongst Gentiles who God opens their eyes, that in few weeks begins that year, 2012, and that this will begin what we call the end time transfer of wealth. And that when these Gentiles begin to receive this blessing, they will never go back financially through the valley again. They will go and grow and grow. It's it's said this way, that God is looking at the church and everyone in it and deciding in the next three and a half years who will be his bankers. And the ones that say, here am I, Lord. You can trust me. We will become so blessed that we will usher in the coming of the Messiah. This message is for you. Would you welcome our good friend, Rafael Cruz? What a tremendous man of God. Bless you. Bless you, brother. Bless you, Have your way. Well, praise God. What a blessing. The pastor referred to Proverbs 13.22 a little while ago, which says that the wealth of the wicked is stored for the righteous. And it is through the kings 
anointed to take dominion, that that transfer of wealth is going to occur. God, even though He's sovereign, even though He's omnipotent, He doesn't just let it rain off the sky. He's going to use people to do it. There are some of you, as a matter of fact, I will dare to say the majority of you, that your anointing is not an anointing as priest. It's an anointing as king. And God has given you an anointing to go to the battlefield. And what's the battlefield? The battlefield is the marketplace. To go to the marketplace and occupy the land. To go to the marketplace and take dominion. If you remember the last time I was on this this pulpit, I talked to you about Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Where God says unto Adam and Eve, Go forth, multiply, take dominion over all my creation. And if you recall, we talked about the fact that that dominion is not just in the church. That dominion is over every area. Society, education, government, economics. But there is a second anointing. And it's the anointing of priests. I mean of kings. Kings who are anointed for a totally different reason than priests. Kings who are anointed to take dominion. Kings who are anointed to go to war. Win the war. And bring the spoils of war to the priest. So the work of the kingdom of God could be accomplished. And I'll tell you. The king needed the blessing of the priest. In order to be successful in battle. And as a matter of fact the word of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 20. And I'm not going to go there. But when you have a chance. Read Deuteronomy chapter 20 verses 1 through 4. And it tells you specifically that before the king went to battle, the priest came and blessed the king and blessed the warriors. And the king needed the blessing of the priest in order to be successful in battle. Because the Bible says that it's not by might or by power. But my my spirit, says the Lord. And they were successful in battle because God went with them. Now, the priest also needed for the king to be successful in battle. Because the priest needed the spoils of war in order to repair the temple. In order to carry out the ministry that God had entrusted him. So the king and the priest complemented each other. And they were both very, very interested in blessing one another. God laid this on Raphael's heart for right now. Listen to me. In the next three and a half years, and we're not waiting three and a half years, it's the end time transfer of wealth. You know, during the elections, and it just hit me as Raphael was up there and he was saying these, this is the anointed by God. When I got a phone call, would I come to a meeting to meet Raphael Cruz and Ted Cruz? Tiz and I had already received about 10 phone calls asking if we would get behind a candidate. Could we come and, could we come and speak at your church? Can we? I mean, it, 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 one after another. And when we were asked by some friends to come to this house, they said we would not only meet Ted, but we'd meet Raphael. Before I ever met Ted, I met Raphael. And and, And I knew that if the son was like the dad, we could trust him to be our senator. Amen. But but here's what here's what it came to me. Ted will be our next senator and and I gave I gave Raphael a word the other day and I said this is the the Senate's just the beginning it's it's gonna be 
much, 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 much higher. But here's the deal. Ted Cruz is the real thing. But he hasn't become the real thing now that he's going to be senator. He was the real thing when he was working as a clerk. He was the real thing when he was going through college. He didn't become faithful now that he's senator. He's going to become senator, and I believe someday either Supreme Court justice or vice president. But he was faithful back when he was his boy, and God took that faithfulness. That's what God's saying to us right now. Are you faithful where you are? Yeah. Jesus, yeah.